Honourable Member for Labrador. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to recognize Mining Week. Mining activity stretches right across our country and it employs nearly 700,000 direct and indirect workers, of which nearly 17,000 are Indigenous. In 2020, the industry contributed $107 billion to Canada's GDP. Canada is a global mining power, thanks to world-class people, deposits, and environmental practices. The TMX lists more mining than any other stock exchange in the world. So in a net zero economy, this industry, they know they can reach even higher and they are ready. That is why we made an historic commitment of $3.8 billion to implement the critical mineral strategy for infrastructure to establish value chains to unlock projects. We doubled the mineral exploration tax credit and we're investing in R&D so that we can move closer towards sustainable mining in a way we know it can be done by Canada. I ask honorable members today to join me in recognizing National Mining Week and the importance of mining to Canadian prosperity. Oral questions, question oral, honorable député de Megantic. The honorable member for Megantic Lérable. Mr. Speaker, in January 2017, the Prime Minister created a big problem at Roxham Road with his treat, hashtag Welcome to Canada. What he did was create a gap in the Safe Third Country Agreement, encouraging thousands of illegal migrants to come to Canada. Five years later, the situation is worse than ever before, and Quebec has been calling for Roxham Road to be closed down. The Prime Minister didn't hesitate to close the borders during the pandemic, but now he is hesitating. Why not suspend the Safe Third Country Agreement? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we believe in our asylum and immigration system. We work closely with our partners at the border, and we work with our American counterparts on questions related to our common border, including the Safe Third Country Agreement. We are always working closely with our partners to respect our national and international obligations when it comes to refugees. The Honourable Member. Yeah, but look at the results. The Prime Minister should stop turning a blind eye to gang violence in the streets of Montreal and elsewhere, despite all the empty rhetoric, despite his election. Since his election, the number of shootings has increased in Montreal. There have been 28 firearms-related incidents uh, involving street gangs since the last update. Does the Prime Minister agree with the Chief of Police of Laval that the situation is unacceptable? The Right Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you very much for that question. Mr. Speaker, as a member from one of the big cities in Canada, from Toronto, I fully agree that we have a huge problem with firearms. And that's precisely why our government has taken big steps to limit firearms in our country, in our communities, and in our cities. And I would invite the Conservatives to support the steps we've taken. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, what the Prime Minister is trying to do is create a false sense of security among Canadians. It's not by turning the screws on honest and law-abiding merchants and firearms owners. That's not going to stop street violence in the major cities. People are fearful for their children. The gangs, uh, gang members are afraid of nothing. They're opening fire in neighborhoods near children, and that's the fact, and it's only getting worse. What's it going to take for this government to combat il the illegal arms trade, which is terrorizing people in Lava Laval, Montreal, and all across Canada? Premier Minister. The Right Honourable Prime Minister, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, 
I'd really like to thank the member opposite for his question, because I agree. Firearms pose a serious threat in our cities, in Montreal, in Toronto, and in Vancouver. That's why our government is ready to take strong action to protect mothers and children, and I would encourage the Conservatives to support us.